Welcome to a Date with Darkness podcast, where I will be discussing the impact of hurtful and abusive relationships and how to overcome them so that you can move through your pain and get to the kind of healthy relationships you want, need, and deserve. I'm Dr. Natalie Jones. I'm a licensed psychotherapist based in California. While I hope that you find this podcast educational and informational, please note it should not be substituted for treatment with a licensed mental health professional. Also, due to the nature of the podcast, some of the information presented on the show can be sensitive to some of my listeners, so please note that listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm so happy that you're tuning in today, and I have been on a little hiatus uh, from the show, so I wanted to come back with a great topic and let you guys know. I'm so happy to be back. I had an incident where, you know, I just, I had to move from my apartment. I got sick for a little while, but I'm happy to be back. And on the show today, I have a great guest for you. Her name is Ava Laura, and she is a licensed social worker and also an intuitive consultant and life coach. She is also the founder of Ava Laura's Healing Center. She uses a holistic approach to help individuals deal with challenges and life issues. She is also a Reiki master teacher, certified life coach, spiritual counselor, hypnotherapist, holistic aromatherapist, yoga and meditation instructor. She is also the creator of her own podcast called Ava Laura, Heal My Life, which you can listen to on all the podcasting platforms. On today's show, she's going to be checking in with us and sharing her personal story about her own breakup and how it changed her life. And, you know, one of the things that I really enjoy, this comes on the heels of Dr. Joy Harden Bradford's um, discussion about how hurtful breakups can be and how we can have difficulty moving on. And Ava Laura, she shares her own experience, but she also shares some of the, her own like physical experiences that she experienced within her body and, you know, how she knew it was time to move on from a relationship that no longer served a positive purpose for her. And I think she talks very eloquently about a lot of the things that we women go through and that sometimes we push off to the side or we ignore or we say, you know, or we can get past this and things like that. And she brings it all together for us and says, hey, you know what? This is what was going on, and I needed to pay attention to this. My body was letting me know these things, and now this is a lesson that I need to know going forward. So without further ado, here's Ava Laura. Hi, Ava Laura. Thank you so much for being on the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to have you on today. So we've been kind of going back and forth on Facebook, and we finally got it situated for today. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been a journey in and of itself. <laughs> here. That's awesome. I love it. Um, so for people who are not familiar with you, can you please uh-huh. tell us about you and the type of work that you do? Yeah. Uh, so I'm a life coach and intuitive consultant uh, based out of the D.C. area, though I work with people literally worldwide now, which is really very cool. Um, and I guess, you know, my journey is kind of like most people in that, um, I did the traditional route schooling. I got my bachelor's degree in psychology, master's degree in social work from Howard university. And I had this big dream. I thought I, you know, got my degree. I was going to save the world, you know, like (laughs) all excited, fresh out with my master's like, woo, now I'm qualified to help everybody. And I thought other people would be equally as excited as I was. (laughs) Of course, that wasn't necessarily the case. And I I started out, um, I was actually working at an outpatient mental health clinic and uh, program director and really excited about that. Thought I was going to be able to do some significant work, working directly with the owner of the company. Mm -hmm. And um, 
just thought I would I would be able to do some good things there. And unfortunately, and I think this happens a lot, particularly in the mental health, um, social work, service industry, really. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know, broaden it that, you know, we get in these positions where we think we're going to be able to really do some good work and then find out there's all these limitations, there's all this red tape that I was not able to do the work that I thought I was going to be able to do. And so instead of being able to help people heal and to grow and to change their lives, I was really just helping people to maintain their dysfunction. And that's not what I signed up for. That's not what I went to school yeah. for. That's not what I worked so hard for. So mm -hmm. I became, I became really depressed. And each and every day I just found myself just, you know, slowly kind of dying inside feeling like, what am I doing here? Like, what is this for? You know, um, I really want to make a difference. I didn't go into this work even for money. Even I, I wanted to fulfill a purpose and, and I'm not doing anything. And, and so my journey really sort of became around that. Um, you know, I kind of just got sick and tired of being sick and tired, um, which is kind of a lot of my clients who come to me. That's the case in some area of their life. They get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that's what happened to me. And I knew that I had to make a change, but I didn't know what to do. You know, which is kind of crazy. Like I'm in the mental or health profession, but I didn't know where to go. I didn't know who to turn to right. because the truth is everybody was like, what's wrong? You got this great job. You're making good money. You know, um, you got your house, you got your husband, like what's wrong with you? <laughs> right. But I was literally dying inside feeling like I'm not doing anything with my life. This is not what I signed up for. Wow. So that was my journey. And so long story short, what ended up happening is I went on this uh, women's retreat, this weekend's retreat, and just kind of got back to myself, did some soulful self-care, as I call it, um, reconnecting with myself, spending time in nature, doing yoga, meditation, um, praying, and just really, you know, getting back to who I am, you know, because I think when we're really stressed out and we're going through things, we kind of forget who we are yeah. and we get so caught up in the stress and in the distraction of it all. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it gave me a moment to reconnect with myself. And what happened is I literally had like this breakdown. I had an emotional breakdown because I was so unhappy and I just found myself on my hands and knees crying out to God, like, God, I don't know what to do, but you got to get me out of here. Like, I can't live like this. This is not living. And, uh, you know, they're doing an the ugly cry. Just, you know, just let it all out. <laughs> and of course I felt better. You know, you have that emotional release. You feel better. But then I realized like, oh my God, I got to go back to work on Monday. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I got to do this all over again. It's not going to end. And um, that's what happened. You know, I went back to work on Monday. Uh, but what actually what happened is my boss calls me into his office. He sat me down and he says, you know, Ava Laura, I have to let you go. And I was like, wait, what? Hold on. <laughs> Run that back. And he was like, here's your servant's pay. And, and I'm sitting there dumbfounded because I've never been fired from anything in my life. Um, you know, I'm that classic overachiever, perfectionist, graduated magna cum laude. So it was, it was shocking to say the least. Um, but after ego kind of had its fill, you know, in my head, like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. You know, spirit really kicked in and said, well, Ava Laura, why are you upset? You know, this is what you prayed for. So what are you going to do about it? And, and that was my journey. What am I going to do? You know, am I going to go back into the traditional field, you know, take the blue pill, just kind of go back and live, you know, the whole everyday quota, get a job, go back nine to five and get a paycheck? Or am I going to take that red pill and take that leap of faith and just do my own thing and discover who am I? You know, what is it that I can do differently? What can I do better than anybody? Else? And, and, and really just, I don't know what that's going to look like, you know? Um, but that's what I decided to do. I took that red pill and I just took this leap of faith and just said, you know what? There's something about me, like everybody else that I can do I need to find out what that is. So I took a six month healing sabbatical. Who am I? Why am I here? You know, what is it that, what's the gifts that I have that I can do that nobody else can do? And how do I go about doing that? Got the counseling, got the coaching, you know, did so many healing art certifications, you name it, I did it. And after that, I opened up Ava Laura's Healing Center and that was back in 2005. And um, I've been doing this work ever since and really kind of helping people like me, you know, in 
in any aspect of their life, just kind of feeling lost or feeling stuck or feeling like, you know what, I didn't sign up for this crap, you know? Yeah, maybe everybody thinks I'm happy and I should be happy, but I'm not, I need help. What am I gonna do? That's uh, quite a journey that you had. And it sounds like you have a lot of passion. A lot. <laughs> and still, cause it never stops. Yeah. You know, it's, right. it's certainly continuous. Correct. And so and tell me what led you to being able to talk about break, breakups, which is what we're here to talk about today. Absolutely. You know, so what's interesting about breakups, right, is that I started looking at my clients and, you know, who comes to me, what they look like, you know, the demographics, all those things. And I started seeing a pattern that the majority of the women that were coming to me came to me after a breakup. Mm -hmm. And I just found that really fascinating because the stories were very similar in that, you know, Ava Laura, I knew that I needed help. I knew that there were things that were wrong, but after the breakup is when I knew I needed to get help. And so I started seeing, you know, how really breakups became a catalyst for change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you have your own personal journey with the breakup? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, and I think, you know, we, we all have, if you've lived long enough, you've had a breakup. Um, but for me, you know, that really was well, significant breakup happened recently in uh, my 14 year marriage ending. Um, so I would say that's a pretty, pretty big breakup. And, and it was really interesting because, you know, I'm one of those people that's all about, you know, practice what you preach. And, uh, and so it really became one of those journeys of now I got to practice what I preach and all these things that I've been telling my clients, now I have to do the same. Mm -hmm. And so not to get all up in it or anything, but what was your healing journey like from a 14 year marriage? I mean, cause that's pretty significant. Absolutely. It is, it is. And, um, you know, I'm going to say that my journey was probably a little different than probably a lot of the people that I work with. And the reason being because I have done so much self-reflection. Um, what I find a lot of times with the people I work with, they haven't done as much. And so a breakup is really kind of shocking out of the blue, you know, just hits you over the head and it just, you know, sort of really in some ways destroyed your life, your foundation. Mm -hmm. Where for me, that wasn't the case. I knew the breakup was coming. So even though, even if you know something like that is coming, I, I'm not going to say you can really plan for it. You can do the best that you can. Can. But it's not really something that you can plan for because the truth is your relationship, particularly in a marriage, becomes a part of your identity. It does. And so it's not just the loss of the relationship, but it's the loss of that identity. Right. And I think that's what a lot of people don't realize. That's why breakups become difficult. So even though I knew it was coming, even though it's actually what I wanted, it was still very difficult in that, like, wow, I've been married 14 years, most of my adult life. Now I'm a single woman in my 40s having to date and I'm a life coach and I'm doing this work and, you know, are there going to be people that say, well, I don't want to work with you because you got a divorce, you know, you don't know what you're talking about, even though for me it was, well, I know even more what I'm talking about now because I've been through the whole cycle <laughs> of a relationship, but all of those things that you go through. So my process was I practice what I preach. I got help. Um, I spent more time with friends. I really did that soulful self-care, as I call it, because the, the truth is when you're ending a relationship, and I think this is what people don't realize, like you're going to have symptoms. You're, you're sick. You, you're literally emotionally sick. You know, like when we talk about a heartbreak, your heart is broken. That is a sickness. You know, you don't feel good. And so just like if you're physically sick, like this flu that's going around, everybody's getting now. You know, you have to rest. You got to take care of yourself. It's the same thing with the breakup. You have to take care of yourself. You have to be even better about self-care because you're sick. You don't feel good. You're going through this whole grieving process. You have lost something significant to you. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. I really got adamant about taking care of myself and seeking out help from professionals, but also from my friends and just being vulnerable and just saying, y'all, I need help. <laughs> Y'all got to love on me. I need a hug, you know, and, and just, and just being able to ask for that and, and being able to be emotionally vulnerable with other people. 
with say in safe spaces because I will say you don't want to be emotionally vulnerable with everybody right. but in safe spaces because sometimes when people have you know experienced something like that what happens is they just end up wanting to talk to everybody because they just want to get it out but <laughs> you don't want to do that you want to pick and choose you know pick to talk to people who you know is a safe space um that can actually really offer you good advice or just be a listening ear or just be there for you and I had to do things to get back in touch with myself, things that I realized I stopped doing. So, you know, I love dancing, taking belly dance classes. I hadn't done that in years. Doing that, you know, exercising, doing kickboxing, you know, just doing things that I really love that I stopped doing. That sounds actually like great advice to kind of get back to yourself. I'm, you know, when we talk about self-reflection, can you talk a little bit about what that is and what that process was like for you? Yeah, you know, I love this because I think self-reflection is one of the most underlying, underutilized healing tools that there is. Mm -hmm. And I think that is not a very sexy topic, so people don't really, you know, you don't really talk about it, but self-reflection is really one of the keys to living your best life. Right, because if you don't know yourself, mm -hmm. how are you going to go after the things that you really want? How are you going to do the things that you want? How are you going to be the person that you want? So for me, I'm a big proponent of meditation. I meditate daily. I teach meditation. I live and breathe by meditation. But you know, also a big part of the process for me was honoring my body and my feelings. Mm -hmm. That was a big part of it is not getting into this space of self judgment because I think that, you know, that's very easy to do. We kind of have a tendency to do that. And what I understand is that when we're judging ourselves, we can't heal. You know, you can't heal when you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening to me. Oh my God, I can't believe I did this. Well, maybe I should have stayed in this relationship. What was I thinking? You know, kind of deal with the devil that I know versus deal with the devil that I don't know. You know, so all these things that kind of go on and on in our heads. Mm -hmm. So when you kind of, when you're talking about self-reflection, it's letting go of that ego voice and really replacing it with spirit the truth of who you truly are. And for some of us, that's extremely difficult because we don't know the difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you this um, maybe your shortcomings or things that um, maybe where you went wrong in a relationship? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think I did a lot of that in the relationship. <laughs> absolutely. Looking at what I could have done differently. Um, just even how I got into the relationship, mm. you know, even though, again, it was a different time. I was in my 20s, you know, and, and, and that has even changed my view of relationships now in that, you know, I have clients who come to me in their 30s. Um, some even in their 40s and, and you know some of them particularly in their 30s are feeling this pressure like I gotta get married yeah. I gotta have kids you know everybody's asking me when this is gonna happen and I think before I would have you know had a different view where now I'm like well how well do you know yourself mm -hmm. have you taken that time to really get to know you because I'm gonna tell you you really don't want to get married and have a significant relationship without doing that work so what because what I realized is I didn't know me in my 20s. I was a different person. So me in my 20s and me in my 40s, totally different chick. Mm -hmm. And I would completely marry a different person now. What were you doing when you say, and I'm, I'm asking that because I'm wondering, like, what are some ways in which people can recognize that, hey, maybe I don't know myself? Yeah. You know, what's so interesting about that is it's kind of when you don't know, you don't know. So a lot of times when you don't know, what happens is your information kind of comes through other people. So you look at the mirrors around you. You look at your significant relationships around you. And when you look at the, the, the type of people that you attract to you, the type of people that you tend to be in relationships with, they tell you a lot about yourself. Because we can only attract and vibrate what we are. I think a lot of people don't realize that. We think like, no, you know, this person was so awful. Okay, well, let's get over that. But what are some of the commonalities, right? Like, what are some of the things that you see in this person that you realize like, oh, maybe I do that. Or maybe I thought that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I secretly really think that about myself, but I haven't really admitted it to anybody else. Right. And they sense that. 
that other absolutely is that wow so it sounds like that was a long journey for you 20 years it was it, it really was but it's been a beautiful experience i you know and it has been painful and i'm not you know i'm certainly not going to say it hasn't even though again and this is what i want to say i wanted the divorce i knew it was coming i asked for it but it was still painful Mm. So imagine a breakup that you didn't want, that you didn't see coming, you know? So regardless, it's a loss. So it's going to be painful. So it was a journey, but, you know, I really believe um, that relationships are a journey of self-reflection and growth. I really do. And so because of that, you know, I honor that and I'm okay with it and I accept it because I believe in the power of relationships. And, um, you know, I often, th this is a quote by Eckhart Tolle that I, absolutely love and I you know I share with all of my clients and um for, for those of you who don't know Eckhart Tolle is a you know spiritual teacher wrote yeah. classic yeah. books some amazing yeah. books um but he says that if I accept that my relationships are here to make me conscious and not happy then my relationships become a journey of self-mastery that leads me to my higher purpose over and over again mm. yeah. And I think that is so pivotal and so key because I think a lot of times people think that their relationships are supposed to make them happy. That's true. A lot of people do come in with that belief that someone else is supposed to make me happy. And I'm also wondering too, if that's a societal or a cultural thing. I think it's all of the above. I think it's all of the above because what happens is and we don't realize it, but we're constantly being marketed to on a day-to-day -day yes. basis. You know, this is a capitalist country. So you have, we, I think what people don't understand is that in everything that we see, you know, TV, video, internet, phones, you go to the movies now, whatever, we're being marketed to. And we're always being sold that we're not good enough. We're not worthy. You need more. You need this iPhone to be cool. You know, you need this jacket for people to like you. I mean, whether we realize it or not, that those are the messages that we're being fed on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, from a really early age, we're being taught that we need more than what we already have. We're not enough. And relationships are one of those ways to sort of become whole, become more. And, you know, you look at, like I talk about Disney. Oh my God, you look at these Disney movies, like what are the messages and these cartoons that we're watching, right? From a very early age, you know, look at Cinderella, look at Beauty and the Beast. Yes. Look at, you know, uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves that, you know, you need this man to come, this knight in shining armor to come and fix you and help you to be happy mm. and whole and your life is happily ever after that. That's the message. That's what we get told. Mm -hmm. So paint me a picture of what what was going on with you in your twenties that you felt like you went into this relationship for reasons that may have not been healthy. So the thing is, I'm not going to say that I went into the relationship in an unhealthy way. Mm -hmm. I don't think that. I think that what it really was is that I didn't know me. I thought that I knew me. But I didn't know who, you know, actually, and maybe I really, what I should say is that I didn't know the me that I was evolving into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even though at that time I was very comfortable with who I was, I was very confident. I was dating. I was having a great time. I actually wasn't even looking to get married. I was having a ball. <laughs> I really was, you know, I was footloose and fancy free. I, you know, I actually enjoyed dating. I literally had, I probably could have picked at that point, several men that I could have actually married. Okay. Um, so it wasn't that it was really more that I didn't know me in the me that I was becoming. And so I married a person who more mirrored who I was at that time, but not who I was going to grow into. Mm. Um, do you feel like, you know, because a lot of what I hear, um, and, and I think some of what you were saying is that maybe you got lost in the relationship once you got married? It was really more that, not so much that I got lost. It wasn't that, but I think, you know, I, I'm, I have a very strong intuition. 
And I think one of the ha things that happened pretty early on is that I knew it wasn't going to work. Mm. It was a very small voice. You know, it wasn't this loud sort of booming, but I knew very early on. And the thing is, I come from a family of, of people who get married and stay married. You know, my parents have been married over 40 years. My grandparents have been married like, you know, 70 years. I have aunts and uncles that have been married 30, 40 years. So that's the family that I come from. So you get married, you stay married. So even though there was this voice, that Ava Laura, I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah. I decided to stick with it and stick it out because you get married, you stay married. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, he wasn't a bad guy. That's the thing. You know, he didn't beat me. He didn't, you know, that's the thing. Like now when you get married, it's so interesting. It's like, well, what happened? You know, did he, was there abuse? Was there, you know, neglect? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, he wasn't a bad guy at all. Mm -hmm. He just wasn't the man for me. Mm -hmm. And so I think for me, I decided to forego my own intuition and do what I thought was right and try to stick it out and work with it. But really, that wasn't the thing to do. What, well, how soon after you got married did you get that intuition? And Pretty what do you soon. think that came from? What you, yeah, what do you think that came from? You know, again, I have a very, I'm very intuitive. Um, okay. Hence, the, you know, the intuitive consultant part. And, you know, I, I truly believe that our intuition um, is our, as, as comes from our spiritual messages, you know, and, and so I, I really believe it comes from that higher place, that part of us that knows. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, what, this is what I will say. I knew pretty early on and I didn't listen to it. However, I believe that the journey was important. I don't regret it because I know so much more now. My marriage taught me a lot. Mm -hmm. It taught me a lot about me. It taught me a lot about relationships. It taught me a lot about being married. It taught me a lot about growth. It taught me a lot about, you know, so many things. So I recognize that even though it, it wasn't the best marriage for me, it wasn't going to work out in the end. It was a part of my journey. And it's interesting that you mentioned that you got that intuition because I believe that a lot of people get a gut feeling that something is not right and they go against it in their relationships for their own reason. And I'm happy that you mentioned yours. I'm also wondering too, as you went against your gut, did that feeling go away? Did it get stronger? Did it kind of come back or, or what happened? Yeah, it definitely got stronger. And um, and it showed up in various ways. Okay. It absolutely showed up in various ways. And so, and again, the thing is, I wasn't, now, I didn't do what a lot of people do. Like, oh, well, you know, maybe mm -hmm. this will change or maybe yeah. this will happen. I didn't do that. I was very aware. However, it got to a point <laughs> where I realized that we're not in the same space and I value peace in my life. <laughs> okay. I'm just, I value peace. And I knew that if I ended the relationship, when I wanted to end the relationship, there would not have been peace. Yeah. That, you know, my ex-husband would have fought me because he wasn't in the same space. He valued the relationship. He was not ready to let it go. So one of the things that I learned and, and I learned patience, Oh, I learned patience. I learned that, let me stay here. Let me get the lessons. Let me do my work and make the most of this experience while I'm here because that is the best thing for me to do at this time. And it took like three years for him to catch up and say, okay, I want a divorce. And I was like, thank you, God. You know, like, okay, let's sign the papers. You know, I was, I was over ready. But if I had not done that, it would not have been so smooth. Now we're still amicable. We're still friends. But I knew that if I did it the way that I wanted to do it, when I wanted to do it, none of that would have happened. It would have been a mess. He would have fought me. We probably would not be on good terms to this day. And so that was a choice that I made. Yeah. What were some of the ways in which your intuition showed up? 
Yeah, so for me, um, it definitely showed up as a feeling. I'm very in tune with my feelings, with my body. So it absolutely showed up in my feelings. Uh, it showed up in my dreams. Can you talk um, a little bit more about your feelings, like in terms of how they were? So for, for other people who may be experiencing this and they're not necessarily sure or they're just dismissive. Yeah. Yeah, if you could just talk a little bit more about the feelings that you had. Yeah, you know, um, I think one of the um, unfortunate um, downfalls in this society is that we really value thinking more than we do feeling. Mm. You know, if you look at things, we, you know, people say, well, what do you think? You know, it's it, that, that becomes more important than how you feel. Mm -hmm. And so we don't necessarily know how to operate out of the two in a very balanced way. We tend to think more than we feel. And even when we think we're feeling, we're actually thinking. So, you know, one of the things that, you know, I, I really teach my clients is how to feel, you know, cause you got to ingest, you got to digest, and then you got to process and release your feelings. And so again, I'm a firm believer in practicing what I preach. And, you know, so I become my own guinea pig in a lot of ways. And so that was the work that I did. And so and as a part of that process, and there are steps to it, but as one of the parts of that process is you got to know, pay attention to your body. Mm -hmm. You know, where do things show up? How do things feel off? Do you feel it in your back? Do you feel it in your stomach? Do you feel it in your head? Do you feel it in your shoulders? Where is there tightness? Where does it feel like, oh my God, there's this constant pain or discomfort that doesn't go away? Mm -hmm. uh -huh and sit with that. What is that? Mm -hmm. So it shows up in our bodies a lot of time. That's why I love energy healing. You know, that's why I love doing that because, you know, a lot of times when I'm doing energy healing, like I can literally feel somebody's emotions, you know, coming up and out of their body. I can feel it because that's where we store them in our body. So if you get in tune with your body, a lot of times you can feel your feelings through your body. Sure. Sure. And you said you, and we'll come back to the energy healing because I do want to know more about that. But what you said, the other ways that intuition came up, you were saying dreams. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Absolutely. So I, I have an advantage in that I interpret dreams. If I didn't, it probably would have been crazy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because most, most of us just don't understand dreams. Yeah. And, and we try to interpret our own dreams and go on Google and all this stuff. And it... Google ain't right. Google don't know about your dreams. I'm trying to tell you. It's wrong information. Um, go to these dream books. It's wrong information. Yeah. So fortunately for me, because I interpret dreams, a lot of times real time, I would know what my dreams mean. So I knew my marriage was going to end. It came up in my dreams in many different ways. Wow. Wow. And I knew, and one of the things that I knew was that I wasn't going to get to where I aspire to be in my profession, in my career, in my personal self, in that marriage, that it couldn't carry me there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. And were there some other ways it came up that you want to mention? Yeah. I mean, really, you know, when I was doing my own self-reflection and, and meeting other people and, and, and talking to other people and just realizing like, wow, that's really cool. I like this about this person or this man. I don't have that in my relationship. Oh. You know, so starting to see things that I realized that I missed yeah. um, that were actually important to me, yeah. um, but I wasn't getting it. And I think one of the biggest ways that I recognized it, and this happened later, I didn't see it right away, but there were literally parts of me that shut down. Mm. And again, and that's that energy piece of it. Um, I think that we don't realize that in order to accommodate um, a, a bad situation, a situation that isn't necessarily the best for us, there, we have to adjust. We have to adapt to that. And a lot of times, some of the ways that we adapt to that is we literally shut down pieces of ourselves. And that's what I ended up doing in my relationship where my creativity shut down, mm -hmm. my passion shut down. Mm -hmm. and, and I didn't even recognize it right away, but it kind of looking at, well, who I was in my 20s and who I am now, huh, that's different. I used to love doing these things. How come I don't do them anymore? Because it was a piece of me that literally just shut down in order to be in this relationship. 
and as you're talking, I'm, you know, I'm just thinking about, you know, and I know that I've talked to my clients and I know that even just in my own personal experience, some is a lot of these things have come up, you know, where you have that feeling like, uh-uh, he ain't the one. <laughs> you just go against that. Yep. And you kind of just yep. mold yourself into this person because you don't have this, like you said, this self-awareness and you just mold yourself. And, and you know, as you're speaking a lot, what I, what, what's coming to my mind is how when people come out of a relationship and they say, I don't know who I am anymore. Yes, that's huge. Yes. It is. And it's yep. like all these little subtle things yep. that you're talking about that actually add up and turn into this very major thing. Um, yes. And, and, and it, it, it's like a snowball effect as you're talking that I'm thinking of. Um, you had energy healing. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about what that is and why you feel like that's important to do? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, it's pivotal. And again, you know, again, like I said, my background is in mental health, in counseling. I, I adore it. I love life coaching. I love all of those things. Um, but I really, really love energy healing as a compliment to all of that. I would never say that as a replacement, but it's a wonderful compliment because again, what it teaches a person to do is to feel in their body. And with energy healing, with that, whatever type of energy healing it is, I practice Reiki and chakra balancing. Mm -hmm. And then for relationships, I do something called a cord cutting. And with all of those things, what's really happening is that it's simply using a tool in, in, so in Reiki, I'm using my hands to just balance and harmonize a person's energy because on a day-to-day -day basis, we're out of harmony with ourselves. Most of us we're you know, we're living in this world. We're going, 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 you know, we got so much going on. We got our work life. We have our relationship. We got our kids, you know, and, and we take very little time for ourselves. So, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the week, we're depleted. So our energy usually is off. We're not in harmony with our own selves. And so what energy work allows you to do is to get back in harmony with yourself mm -hmm. by kind of removing, you know, sort of excess energy or also, you know, sort of replacing depleted energy. So where you might deplete, because again, if you're going, going, going and not refilling yourself, then there's going to be a depletion. You know, some of us are very empathetic. Um, and so we take on other people's energy. So removing that, you know, we don't have those boundaries. So we're always taking on other people's energy. So, you know, releasing other people's energies, um, filling up the depletions, and then also releasing any excess energy. And so what have you found to be most effective, especially when you're talking about releasing energy and you're talking about these relationships that aren't good for us, what, what, do you, what have you found to be the most effective way to release that energy? Because there's a lot of people out there, a lot of people who listen to the show who have been in bad relationships and they just cannot shake the energy. They, yes. they feel like they're stuck, they can't move on. Yeah. You know, it just left them in such a way that they almost feel paralyzed. Yeah, that's very true. Mm -hmm. And um, anytime I have a client who says that, I always recommend a cord cutting. Okay. Can you tell because, us about that? Sure. Because here's here's the thing, and, and, and I'm glad that you said that, because what happens is we feel that when we end a relationship physically, that the relationship is over. Mm -hmm. But the relationship is not over because you're still carrying that energy from the relationship. So particularly, again, if it's a marriage, um, a very intimate relationship, a relationship that you've been in for many years, it doesn't even have to be a romantic relationship. It can be a relationship with your boss, mm -hmm. with a friend, with a family member, your mother, your father, whoever. But in any relationship, there's this exchange, this give and take of energy. And so what happens is you might say, oh, that relationship is over. They're no longer in my life. But that energy exchange is still there. Is that what you would consider like what we call baggage? Yeah, I would absolutely call it. I, I would call it energetic baggage. Yeah. Because, it's, again, it's not something that we can see. Now, you can feel it, but it's not something that we can see or touch. Mm -hmm. And so 
a lot of times we don't know how to tackle it or we don't really know what it is, even though you might feel it. Because, you know, for most people, there's no name for it, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it absolutely is energetic baggage. And so in a cord cutting, what I'm doing is actually releasing and cutting the cord from that relationship. So there's no more energy exchange between you and that other person. Okay. So how does that work exactly? It's a, um, it's an energetic tool. Um, it, it is, is a whole process. It's not <laughs> something that I can kind of walk you through step by step, yeah. but it's really a whole process that I utilize. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's extremely effective and I love it because just like you said, a lot of times people are feeling stuff. They're still feeling like, oh my God, you know, I haven't been with this person six months, a year, but I'm still feeling, you know, or I'm attracting people that are just like them or, you know, yeah. all of these things, or I'm still thinking about them from time to time. Like they can't shake it. They can't let it go. That's that energy residue that's still there that needs to just be cut and released so they can move on. Mm. And is that something that should be done multiple times or is that like a one and done type of thing? It's a one time thing with one particular person. I've actually had, it's so interesting because um, everybody's different, particularly I would say for my male clients, but I had um, one male client, he, you know, he had tried therapy, he was just like, it just didn't work for me. I didn't like it. His way of therapy was core cuttings. So he cut cords with every, literally everybody in his family, romantic relationships, everybody. That was, that was his way of healing. That's what allowed him to move on. Wow. And do you know a difference with people who do that? Yeah. Right away? Is that like right away instant? It's really different for everybody. So I wouldn't necessarily say right away, but some people do notice it right away. Some people do. Um, where others, it might be a more gradual process. Uh, so I always tell my clients, just kind of watch yourself. See how you feel. Um, see what comes up in your day-to-day -day life. See the things that you're thinking. Just notice. Because a lot of times when you're doing any type of energy healing, there's an internal shift. And there's going to be memories and thoughts and yeah. feelings and things that start to come up and out to the surface. So that's one of the things that I always tell my clients is to kind of watch and pay attention to because it really expresses itself differently for everybody. Yeah. And so do you still believe in counseling for things? Oh, like absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So do you believe in doing this in like conjunction with? Yeah. Like I said, I would never say it's a replacement, although I've had people that just say, again, counseling just didn't work for me. Right. And I usually tell them, you just didn't have the right process. You didn't have the right counselor. Um, that's not necessarily the case. I would not use it as a replacement. I, I like to use it in conjunction with. Right. Because the thing, what this does is that it helps you to sort of get unstuck. It removes that energy. But what counseling then is going to do is give you new tools, is going to give you a different perspective. It's going to help you to see things in a different way so you don't make those same mistakes. Okay. Do you feel like there's other things that people can do to bring back uh, their sense of self or their self-awareness outside of the energy healing, counseling, and uh, yeah. are there other things that you would also recommend that they do in addition to that? Again, I'm a strong proponent of self-care. Okay. in which all of these things are a part of the self-care process. Right. And, and, and when I say that though, self-care, the first word is self. Yes. And so really what it is, is getting back in tune with yourself. That I believe is the goal for self-care is getting back in tune with yourself. So it could be as simple as meditating or just spending some quiet time with yourself every day, journaling, you know, sleeping, you know, all of those things, getting back in tune with yourself, because when you honor your needs and how you feel, then information will start to come to you. You have space, you know, to learn more about yourself, who you are, why you're here, why you did the things that you did, why you attract the people you attract. You give yourself the space for that to happen. But when you're kind of just going, 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 and you know, you don't give your time to just Self, just time to breathe and just be you never have that time of self-reflection to give this information so i really believe in self-care and getting back in tune with yourself right now i've worked with a lot of people and i'm sure you have that don't like the idea of being alone 
<laughs> that would be correct. <laughs> <laughs> what do you recommend for people like that? You know, here's the thing. Um, we have to start looking at being alone and, and, and being lonely as the same thing. You know, I, oh my God, I value my alone time. I mm -hmm. love relationships. I'm a, t I'm a relationship. Ch I love relationships. Mm -hmm. But if I'm in a relationship where I don't get my alone time, I'm like, you got to go. <laughs> you got to go. <laughs> so it's not about, it's not, it doesn't mean that you're lonely. You know, it doesn't mean that, you know, you, you can't have a relationship or be in a relationship. You can be in a relationship and still schedule your own alone time. So it doesn't mean that. And, and this is how I look at it. And this is what I tell my clients. If you don't like being alone with you, how the hell is anybody else going to want to be alone with you? Yeah. So you got to love you. You got to like being around you. Yeah. So somebody else will like being around you too. Very true. Very true. Okay. Ava, Laura, any resources that you would suggest? And, um, you know, if people are listening to this and they're like, oh, okay, I want to try energy healing. How would they go about finding that? Yeah. Um, well, definitely. I have a tremendous amount of information on um, my website so certainly um you can use that as your you know first point of contact i mean everything now of course can be googled which is you know awesome mm -hmm. well the blessing of the curse because you can get good information and bad information mm -hmm. um but definitely go to my website at avalora.com mm -hmm. it, it, it literally is a portal for that so i talk mm -hmm. about reiki chakra balancing core cutting i also have a podcast as well where i talk about all of these things as well mm -hmm. um so you can get a lot of information there as well. Mm -hmm. Are there any books or videos or anything that you would recommend for people um, that are going through a breakup or have been through a, through a breakup and, and have struggled with some of the things that we're talking about today? Yeah. Um, you know, I really love Brene Brown's work. Um, and, and, and really talking about the power of vulnerability. Yeah. And I really like that work because um, it really is about being vulnerable and being intimate. And, you know, when you're going through a breakup, you are at your most vulnerable. Yeah. You really are. You're at your most vulnerable space. And you really have to be gentle with yourself and mm -hmm. love on yourself and just mm -hmm. know that it's not easy. It is difficult. It hurts, but you absolutely can get through it. And one of the ways that you can do that is really doing that feelings work and being vulnerable and honoring how you feel and what you need. Amazing. I would agree with that. Um, any projects that are coming up for you or any <laughs> find you doing some other things? Yeah, um, I always have a lot going on. So I always <laughs> suggest, you know, I mean, that, go to my website. That literally is my portal, okay. avalora.com. Okay. Uh, get on my podcast, subscribe to me on iTunes, get on my mailing list, yeah. get on my mailing list, then Everything that I have going on, you'll get. And of course, all social media. I am Googleicious. You can find me everywhere. So I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Insta. I'm on everything. So that way you can kind of keep in touch because I'm always teaching workshops. Like I'm actually teaching a Reiki training tomorrow. Um, I teach a lot of meditation courses. I speak at a lot of conferences and retreats and, um, you know, uh, companies and things like that. So there's always something going on sure okay and this has been very insightful i've learned so much from listening to you today and i know my listeners have and i really enjoyed this so thank you so much for coming on thank you so much for having me i'm glad we were finally able to do this yeah <laughs> Okay, I thought that was such a great show with Ava Laura. I would love to know what you think about all of the things that she had to say, the discussion of her relationship and, and everything like that. So please go ahead and drop me a note to a date with darkness at gmail.com. Love to hear your thoughts. Um, and also, please feel free to come on over on Facebook and join the friendly chat at A Date with Darkness Facebook group as well. Again, all of the links are going to be in the show notes. And 
Also, if you feel like this podcast would benefit someone, if you like it, love it, please do share it. Um, Please do review it so that other people can take a look at what you've written and start tuning in too. So I would love to hear again from you. And I can't wait until next time and we can continue our wonderful talks together. Until next time, be well. Thank you.